introduction. Okay, we are starting to record. And uh, it's my pleasure to introduce the uh, first uh, speaker for this morning. Ismail Sudi will tell us about jet medium excitations. So the floor is all yours. Yeah. Hi, everyone. So and this morning I'll be talking about the jet medium excitation. So uh, last uh, Friday, I think you heard the talk by Amit about uh, the jet interactions with the medium and how the how the jet can interact with the medium and lose their energy. And uh, also maybe you have seen a question that was asked yesterday about how that if you look at this jet and uh, how at this individual interactions with the medium, you see that the energy is uh, conserved at each vertex because the one to two scatterings conserve energy and then the, the elastic scatterings also conserve energy. So the question that was asked is how, how can we see this jet suppression if each individual scattering uh, conserves energy? And I think Abhijit answered this nicely is that the, these interactions are between a hard parton and the medium parton. And so some of this energy is transferred from the hard parton to the medium parton. And these medium partons then thermalize way outside of the jet con. And this is what we will try to understand in this lecture is how these uh, medium partons after being kicked in the, by the jet, how do they thermalize? So today, uh, the lecture will be divided into kind of three uh, parts. So first, I will try to introduce this medium response and how it can be studied through different methods. And then I will talk about uh, this, the way I've been working on before joining Jetscape. This, uh, this is a kinetic description of how to describe the medium uh, hard parton and medium interactions using a kinetic theory approach. And then at the end, I'll talk about the medium response in Jetscape and how it is considered in the Jetscape framework. So let me start by the introduction. So as you have seen last week with Amit, we have this hard partons that interact with the medium. Or you have seen the, that basically the two mechanisms that are considered at leading order is these uh, two to two scatterings, these elastic scatterings with the medium. And this leads can kick the parton off shell and then the parton radiates into radiates uh, some collinear radiation. And you have seen different uh, approaches of uh, dealing with this in Jetscape using the matter approach for a high virtual parton and then the LBT approach or Martini for for the low virtual phase. So as the hard parton continues this cascade of the two to two, two scatterings and the collinear radiation, some of this radiation will start to go to larger cones. And then when we define then at the end in the detector we will define some cone size and then some jet algorithm to find these jets, we see that some of these partons will, will be outside this cone and this will lead to the suppression that we talk about. And so what, what Friday was focused about is how is this uh, hard partons cascade, but then it's also but how about the energy deposition in the medium and this depletion? How can we treat it? And so this is what I call modeling the medium response. And so the, the first approach is using a perturbative approximation where, so we're doing the two, two, two scatterings here. We sample uh, partons from the medium uh, distribution with a given temperature. And so these we can, consider a negative parton and add to our shower as negative parton. And so these are also called holes. And then we free stream them uh, all the way to this detector. And uh, then we have to subtract them at the, uh, at the end before computing the, the spectrum. And then we have also this recall parton, which are these 
negative partons that are kicked here after the kick. And so these recall partons we can consider to be part of the cascade. But the, the drawback of this approach is, uh, is when the energy of this recoil parton is, is at the scale of the temperature, then maybe it doesn't really make sense to follow them using a perturbative approach. And maybe one should actually thermalize these recoil parton with the meat. And so a second approach, which is a, using the hydrodynamics to compute this response. So one can do this using a linear approximation where you consider your energy momentum tensor as a bulk energy momentum tensor plus a, an excitation. And this excitation is a solution of this uh, so source uh, differential equation where you have here J the source which comes from this medium deposition. So these holes and recalls. And uh, you linearize this by considering the bulk to have no, no source. And here I show th this work that does exactly this. And they solve this uh, linearized uh, equation. And they show here the energy density as a function of uh, uh, position in position here, x and z. And you see here that the jet traversing here in x equals zero direction uh, deposit this energy where you see here uh, this Mach con where the energy is deposited at this con. And here you see a negative part, which is a depletion. So some partons that are medium partons are kicked towards the, the direction and kicked out to, to large con size. One can also do this uh, again in hydro, but by considering the full uh, hydro without uh, any linearization. This has been done in several works. So here I show on the left uh, call LBT hydro, this model that uh, couples LBT to uh, hydrodynamics. And here they, they study uh, the evolution of a photon jet, where the photon goes, a uh, uh, photon and a jet go back to back. So the jet here we have this going downward and the photon going upward. And here shows this as a function of y and x in position. And we look at the medium here, we look at the medium plus the jet on the left at the early time and then late time. And then on the right, what they do is they subtract the medium without the this jet. So they have two evolutions, one with the jet and one without a jet. And then they subtract the one without a jet from the one that is, has a jet. And, he, and so this gives us only the medium excitation. And so what we see here is, again, this blue is a negative value. So we have here. Uh, yeah, so we have here the jet that goes uh, downward and kicks some partons here in towards the direction of the jet. And then we have this depletion here in blue, which means some partons that are taken from the medium and kicked toward the direction of the jet. This is only. And this can also be seen here in this other study by Yasuke and collaborators where again, we have, uh, we look at only the, the excitation of the energy de density. So they subtract the medium without the jet. And you see again, in the direction of the jet, we have this uh, the, the position uh, in the forward, and then we have this depletion in the back. So we have, this, again, kind of Macron dynamics. And so, one way to look at this, one example uh, observable we can study is uh, the jet shape that I give here, so which describes the angular structure of the jet. So it kind of, if you define a, a, a cone around the, the jet, and you have, it kind of describes the BT distribution in this uh, small region, delta R here, the shaded region as a function of R, as a function of uh, how big you take it, the, 
the JETCOM. And so here I show the, the same study that was on the right, showing the jet shape as a function of the of the radius around the jet. And we have here different curves. So we have the PP spectrum from Pythia, and then we have the heavy ion spectrum here in blue without any hydro response. And then in yellow, we have this hydrodynamic response. And in red, we have the sum of the, the hydro response and the heavy ion without hydro response. So as you can see at small angles, we can describe the spectrum of the, the CMS with, the, with just the spectrum of heavy ion collisions. But, and this is because the hydro response here is small because most of the uh, because hydro response later on starts to take over the the spectrum of the heavy ion in blue and you see that it becomes even more important and that's why the red one here doesn't go to the blue so it stays it stays larger than than the spectrum and so and so what you see here is that the, this hydro response becomes important at larger angles. Why well, it's, it's not so important here at small angles. When you start to go to larger and larger angles, the hydro response starts to become important, and that's when you start to recover the energy of the jet. And, so, and you start to recover this energy conservation. And so now we change the gears a little bit and talk about it. my earlier work, which is using a kinetic theory to try to study this uh, this uh, medium response. So here I, I put again a diagram of the different stages of the evolution of jets in heavy ion collision. So as you've seen with Amit when he talked about uh, the factorization theorem. So yeah, you, here as you can see the uh, uh, jets in heavy ion collisions undergo different uh, evolutions at different scale stages. So we have the initial production in the beginning due to the hard partonic collision. And then there's a kind of vacuum shower for the high virtual partons. And then once they're resolved by the medium, then they undergo this in medium fragmentation. And at the end, we have this hydronization of certain. And so in this study of kinetic theory, we try to focus on only this in medium fragmentation. So we, we study only this energy loss and equilibration of hard partons in the, <clears throat> in the medium. Uh, we do this by considering again hard parton traverse in the medium. And we consider the interactions of this hard parton in the medium to we try to understand the energy cascade and then this out of con energy loss and how this medium response and full thermization of the hard parton happen. This we do is in an effective kinetic description, which is based uh, on the effective kinetic theory at leading order, which you have seen also in the lecture last week or with the transport lecture. So we have this Boltzmann equation, uh, which dis uh, describes the evolution of the phase space distribution. And we have the collision as a, using this collision terms. And we consider this high energetic partons as a linearized fluctuation over a static background equilibrium. So we linearize the phase space distribution similar to what was done in the hydrodynamic evolution. And we have here the static background equilibrium that describes the QGP plus this delta F, which describes the hard parton. And here I will talk about the energy distribution that I call the D of X, which is just taking this phase space distribution with three powers of momentum. And I will consider this as a function of uh, the parton momentum fraction, which is the fraction of momentum some carried by each parton. So just P divided by the total energy of the jet. 
and the polar angle theta will be considered to be the angle around the, the PZ of the initial parton. So the initial parton is going around the Z direction, and then there is this uh, azimuth angle around the Z direction, which will be theta. And here we consider the exact conservation of energy and momentum and valence charge, which will allow us to study this evolution from the high energy of the jet all the way to the temperature, including the full thermization of the hard parton. And so we can go, we can study this medium response of the partons that become the, of the order of the temperature. So for the collision term, as you have heard now, there are two types of processes. So we have this elastic scattering, which goes uh, these three level diagrams of two to two scatterings. And you have all the different kinds of scatterings. And then, and then because of the multiple soft scattering with the medium, this leads to uh, radiation is in medium induced radiation and this can be resumed into an effective term uh, effective collision integral which is given by this one to two collision and here i uh, we use this amy approach which considers the medium length to be much larger than the formation time and so we the rate is is computed in this infinite medium uh, approximation, which is also what is done in Martin. And so when we do this evolution, we find that so here first I will talk about just the collinear cascade, so how the energy is lost collinearly, so by integrating out this theta angle. And so because we have full conservation of energy. So to talk about this energy loss, we have to consider a scale for which the partons are then considered to be part of the medium because we don't differentiate between the medium partons and the, the hard partons. And this is also because here the linearized fluctuation. So here we have this static background equilibrium, which means this doesn't change with time. We have this fluctuation on top. And so this actually will thermalize and would be, go to a near thermal distribution. And so the full evolution is just encoded in this en energy distribution. And so this describes both the hard parton and the, the, the partons that will thermalize with the medium. And so to talk about energy loss, then we define a scale and we take this two pi t where we consider partons with momentum larger than two pi t to be hard partons and partons with lower than two pi t to be part of the medium. And so if we look at two different jets where we start either with a gluon hard parton or a quark, okay. we see that the evolution can be divided into three regimes. And so first we have an initial energy loss which is mediated by gluon radiation recoil terms. I will explain more later. And then very soon afterwards, we have an energy cascade that sets in with the universality between the gluon and quark jet, which is driven by the radiated breakup by the successive splittings and its reminiscence of the turbulence. And then at the end, we have an exponential decay that leads to the equilibration of the partons with the medium. So first, let me start by talking about the early time behavior, which is this uh, direct deposition of energy into the medium. And this we can try to understand by looking at the, the collision terms in in a kind of perturbative way. So by considering a single uh, a single uh, collision. So here we look at the, this one to two scatterings and we consider a, a, a single uh, or like a single radiation. <clears throat> and so here for, for a gluon jet, we start with a gluon that has a single radiation. 
and try to solve uh, perturbatively for this uh, distribution. And we find that the distribution is actually driven by this K, which is the spectrum of the gluon radiation. And so the distribution follows the behavior of a single splitting between the medium scale. So T over E is the medium scale and the hard part on here at the momentum fraction equals one. And for a gluon, this is given by this one over square root X. And for the singlet channel, which is just a quark plus anti-quark, is given by this square root x uh, with the linear rising amplitude that gives additional uh, radiations. And so if we look now at the energy deposited in a region lower than 2 pi t, so in the medium scales, so by just taking the derivative of the energy as a function of time, we find that we have this constant term. So we have this soft radiation that deposits energy in the medium. And we have also what I call recoil, which is not shown here, but we also can calculate, which is just the recoil of the partons due to the, the medium partons due to the two to two scatterings. So for each 2 to 2 scattering, we have a recoil particle that deposits energy also in the medium scales. And this we can see uh, again here for the example of an initial gluon uh, jet. So here, for if we look at the gluon distribution on the left times square root x as a function of the momentum fraction. So here at 1, we have the high energy gluon that sits here which is modeled by an initial uh, Gaussian distribution. But we also have uh, here this spectrum of one over square root X, which is here, which we can describe here with this uh, gray dashed lines. And th this gives a good agreement with the distribution at early times. And then we have here a bump here, which is this recoil due to the two to two scatterings. So these are medium partons that are pushed into the direction of the jet. And so they lead to this bump recoil. And for the singlet distribution on the right, we have a, again a similar behavior. Where here we have this square root X behavior. So for, due to the single emission. So this is driven by gluon splitting to a quark anti quark pair because we start with an initial gluon jet. And then we have the recoil here, which has a, which pushes some quarks into the direction of the jet. And we have here a negative part, which is the depletion of the, these dashed lines here is the negative part, which describes the depletion of the medium parton. So we subtract some medium parton from the lower momentum region and we add more partons into the higher momentum region. So we kind of push the partons in the direction of the jet. But this initial, uh, this <laughs> early time behavior soon starts to deviate. As you see here, especially for the singlet channel, we have this uh, gray dash lines that don't describe anymore the distribution. And this is because we have this uh, turbulent cascade that sits in. So first, let me just introduce turbulence. So turbulence is usually understood using these vortices in a Ricardson cascade. So you have these vortices that get divided into smaller and smaller vertices all the way to, to the dissipation scale. And so energy injected into the system gets divided into smaller and smaller scales until it's dissipated. Uh, this is in a self-similar way, and this is what is known as a as turbulence. Here we have what is known as wave turbulence, which is uh, <clears throat> analogous to this uh, kind of turbulence cascade where we have a hard parton that injects energy to the to the cascade and due to this multiple soft uh, multiple uh, collinear radi successive splittings we have this 
energy gets transported in the in this cascade all the way to the thermal bath without any deposition in uh, the intermediate scale. And, and so this leads to a constant uh, energy flux which doesn't depend on the <clears throat> on the scale. So so if we co compute the energy flux again, which is this derivative of energy by time up to some scale. So before we were computing it to two pi t, but now if we compute it up to some arbitrary scale, lambda, what we find is that this energy flux actually does not depend on the scale. So the energy flux at each scale is, is the same. And we find this is linear energy flux. And so this, So this uh, scale energy, uh, invariant energy flux is also characterized by a stationary turbulence solution, which is a, a behavior, a, a stationary solution between the the two scales. So we have here the hard scale, which where the energy is injected, and the medium scale where it gets dissipated. And the scale invariant uh, solution, this turbulence solution, will, was shown to be given by this one over square root x for the gluon distribution and as well as for the singlet distribution. Interestingly, this is a coincidence, but the in early time behavior and the scale, this turbulent solution are the same for the gluon. And that's why the gluon doesn't have to change shapes from this one over square root x to a different behavior. It always stays as one over square root x. While for the singlet, it starts as square root x in the early times, but then it has to change to one over square root x. And we can look at the distribution. Uh, we can first now include these uh, estimates for the early time behavior of the energy flux plus this energy loss behavior. And if we look now at the energy flux, which is just the time derivative of this energy distribution I showed before, we see that this describes this linear behavior and the constant term described very well this, this this behavior of the energy flux at early to intermediate times. And we also see a scale in Casimir scale in between the gluon and quark jet, since all these different constants here have this scaling so we have this universality between the blue objects. And we can also look at the, the distribution to characterize this turbulence beha turbulent behavior. Since we've seen that this has to be described by this one over square root x. So now, again, we are looking at square root x times the distribution. And on the left, we have a gluon energy distribution. And we see this. Uh, scale invariant distribution stays uh, constant throughout the evolution until the late times. We see again the same thing for the singlet distribution. And you see here these bumps again, which are the <coughs> thermalized uh, uh, partons that thermalize with the medium. And so these uh, describe uh, the recoil of the medium, which gets pushed in the direction of the jet. And then ultimately at the end, the jet will equilibrate with the medium. And, and since we have here a linear uh, evolution, we can write the equations of motion as an eigenvalue problem <clears throat> by considering the distributions, some eigenvectors. And we look for the eigenvalues lambda i. And because we have uh, some conserved quantities, then the zero modes, so the ones with the eigenvalue equals zero, will come from uh, these conserved quantities, uh, energy and valence charge. And, and their eigenvectors will describe the asymptotic behavior, the stationary solution, which will be the late time behavior of the distribution. And this can be given by considering this distribution to be <coughs> the, the, a linear 
perturbation of the equilibrium distribution. So for the gluons, it will be this pulse distribution uh, for the quarks to the Fermi-Dirac distribution. And so we can actually find analytically the stationary solution as just uh, uh, by computing the first order Taylor expansion of the equilibrium distribution where we expand in these uh, uh, in the conjugate of the conserved quantity. So for the energy, we expand in temperature and for the valence charge, we expand in chemical potential. And, and the low line eigenvalues, so the smallest eigenvalues by magnitude, because all the eigenvalues are negative because we have a dissipating equation of motion. <laughs> so the the smallest eigenvalues by magnitude then describe the late time behavior. And we can look at this late time behavior of the, again, energy uh, flux as a function of time. And now we look at different uh, initial energies from 30 to 1000 times to 10 temperature. And here in gray, which is uh, maybe not cannot see it very well, but we can describe this exponential decay at the end of the, of the evolution very well. But this is at very late times where the jet has lost most of its energy. So this is, especially for high energy jets, this is not so important, but for low energy jets, this near equilibrium physics can, can be more important. And then at the end here, we, have, we can describe the, the final distribution, which is here in green, well described by this black dash trans, which go on top of the gray. Now we looked at the energy cascade without looking at the angular structure. But we can look also at the angular structure of the cascade. And here I show the, again, the evolution of the distribution, energy distribution, but now we're looking at the energy distribution as a function of a momentum fraction and also angle here in this axis, where this theta angle is the angle around the initial parton. So the initial parton is going in the Z direction and theta will be the azimuth angle around this Z direction. So as you can see here, we start with some initial parton here at theta equals zero and the momentum fraction equal one. And this is already after some time, you see that we have this energy cascade that I showed in the collinear cascade that sits in. And, but this energy cascade is very collinear and stays at a, around angle equals zero. It doesn't go to larger angles. <clears throat> and However, later on, this peak of energy that was transferred to the low scale starts to thermalize due to the two to two scatterings with the thermal medium, and it starts to go to larger and larger angles. But this is only at, at the, the low scales, because as you can see, this momentum fraction here is in the log scale. So actually in the higher scale, which is here at one, we see very minimal broadening of this hard part on. So, as the, the time goes on, these uh, soft partons will thermalize to large angles, while these hard partons will stay collinear, mostly collinear. And so what we, we see is that this energy loss is dominated by the collinear branching, which sends this energy to low scales, but then it's followed by this thermalization of the soft sector, which sends the energy out to larger cones. And since we see negligible broadening of the hard particles, this energy loss out of cone is mainly due to the energy deposition in the soft section, which drives these out to large cones. Yeah, and so we can, we can corroborate this further if we look at the, energy stored inside the different cone sizes. 
So by integrating the energy distribution up to some concise R, and we can look at two different uh, energies, either the one stored in the full momentum range or by just looking at the hard partons up to 2 pi t, like we did before, which is here given this dashed lines and the full range is given this line points. And we have, we see here in green, the, <clears throat> the most narrow cones and in red intermediate cones and in blue, the larger cones. And what we see is that for the narrow cones, we have, we don't have a huge difference between the, the energy stored in the full range of momentum and the one stored only in the hard partons. So the soft sector here does not play a major role. And we can see similar energy loss in both momentum region. While when we go to larger cone sizes, we see that the soft sector carries a substantial fraction of the equilibrium energy at late times, <clears throat> which is this blue region here. You see that it's large, which is the fraction of energy carried <clears throat> in the soft sector. And then here we see also divergence behavior between the energy loss behavior. Now, since I have only 20 minutes left, and I will skip this last side of this part of the talk and just go to the conclusion of this part so that I can talk about how it's, this medium response is done in Jetscape. So let me just summarize what we've seen so far. So, so what we have seen is that this high energy distribution stays collinear and the energy at large angle is mainly sensitive to the soft scales. While the energy deposition in the medium, yeah, so the energy at large angle will come from this energy deposition in the medium. And so this this is a kind of motivation to, to study this energy response. And if one wants to go to large, if one wants to look at large angle jets or, or the angular structure of the jet. And so now I'll try to introduce how this is done in Jetscape. And so I <laughs> let me start by showing again this diagram that you you have seen last week. So now we've, we've been focused on this multi-stage jet shower. And so mainly we will focus on how this energy momentum deposition, which is kind of a link between the jet shower and the, uh, the fluid dynamics of the medium. So, so it, which kind of uh, gives us a kind of communication between these two different uh, stages that uh, happen simultaneously. And so to now we'll try to talk about how to connect this multi-state jet out to the fluid dynamics of the medium. And so one approach is what we call weakly coupled jet medium interaction. And so as, as I said, these, uh, we have this hard part on cascade, which undergoes these two to two scatterings and then also this collinear radiation. And each to two, two to two scattering, we sample then a, hard, a part on from the medium, which we consider as a whole or a ne negative part on. And then we have these recoils here that we call recoils, which are part of the jet tower and so to compute the spectrum, which we call here the signal, we have the shower, we compute the spectrum of the shower, and then we subtract the spectrum of the hole. And, and we can see here how, how the Jetscape results describe the RAA using this recoil hole formalism. So here we have a, the latest Jetscape results compared to Atlas. We have here in the red, the RIA comp computed in uh, 
in Jetscape with whole subtraction and in blue without whole subtraction. And you see that for a small PT, this whole subtraction is what gives us more subtraction to be to be uh, closer to the <coughs> to the experimental results. And then the other approach is to to try to do this not perturbatively. So by uh, including these partons in the medium. So since we have the bulk dynamics in the medium that are described by the hydrodynamic equation. And this again uh, can be, and the jet shower can be included as a, as a source term. But the problem with this is if if we want to include this, the hydrodynamics described this large scale uh, fields, while the this jet shower is usually described by partons, which are localized and have a small size. And so if we try to do this direct deposition, the, this will be too narrow to be studied by hydrodynamics. And so that's why there was work to include this energy deposition uh, by modeling it using what what we call causal diffusion using this liquefier uh, mod model. So this okay. yeah. So this causal diffusion we take this again this holes which are these negative partons and the recoil and we compare their energy to some threshold the, the recoil energy to some threshold while the holes we take all the holes and if the energy of the recoil is smaller than the threshold then they are sent to liquefier and diffused in position space so we have this diffusion equation that takes the source which is just the momentum of the each parton and at some position. So in position space, the distribution is very narrow because these are partons without any size. And so this gets diffused to a Gaussian due to this diffusion e equation that has some, some size. And then this Gaussian can then be put into the hydro response. And we can we can then study the hydrodynamic response using this. And here I show results of the temperature profile due to the jet propagation. And we again see here a jet that goes in the horizontal direction here in X. And we see again the blue is the negative part. So we see a depletion in the opposite side of the jet and we see a boosted partons in the direction of the jet, which can also be seen if you look at the evolution uh, as a function of time. And here we look at the PT distribution of the of this uh, parton. And we see that uh, in the positive uh, rapidity, we have this peak of jet. And then in the negative rapidity, we have this depletion in uh, around some angle, which is this diffusion. And so to conclude, so medium response is important, especially for studying the low PT partons, which will be something interesting to look at for S Phoenix, which will consider jets are a trick. And so there the, the jets are much lower energy than uh, at LHC. Uh, we have seen different methods to study the medium response. So the kinetic method was interesting theoretically to, to study how the medium response to jet, but it's not realistic yet since we consider this, uh, this uh, infinite medium radiation which doesn't describe the interplay of the formation time with, 
with the medium length. And so it means the improvement and also the medium there is, is just a static background, a fully graded medium, and we don't have this full uh, dynamical medium. We also saw this weekly coupled method, but this one also has some drop. Uh, so here the problem is that we try to push perturbative methods out of the range of their validity. So if the, these recall partons have low energy, then it makes more sense to study them using the hydrodynamics since they become part of the medium. And so maybe the best approach will be this two-stage hydrodynamics where you consider the, uh, the uh, cascade to be a source term for the hydro. But the problem with this is it's numerically demanding since you have to, again, do a, sing a, a second hydrodynamic evolution for each uh, jet. And this can lead to, to obtain large statistics, we need to uh, do a lot of hydrodynamic evolutions, which can be demand. And so thank you for listening. Now, okay. If you have any so, questions. yeah. So we haven't seen a ton of questions, uh, or any questions uh, um, on the Slack channel. But now I think it would be a good time to uh, uh, think about a few questions. And you can, as, as we said, you can either ask on uh, Slack on Zoom, or I guess you could also technically unmute yourself. Uh, and raise your hand and we can uh, call on uh, um, call on people to ask questions. But before that, I think we should uh, thank Ismail for the uh, very comprehensive uh, uh, talk. So thank you, there's my applause button. <laughs> um, okay, I mean, we have, uh, well, we have 10 minutes before the break. That was the plan. We have 38 participants. Um, all we need are some questions. Uh, I, I think I see one then with raised hand. Okay, let me just check. Yeah, Raben, please, if you can, uh, I don't know if you can unmute yourself or if uh, I need to do that. Hi. Ah, you yeah, unmute. Okay, go ahead. Ah, thank you for your presentation. I want to ask in terms of the jet media interactions. So is the medium limited to QGP? Can it be called nuclear matter? <clears throat> I mean, here I was focusing on heavy ion collisions where the, uh, I was focusing mostly on the QGP, but I, I think you mean in the transport phase when you say called nuclear matter, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not very familiar with this, but I, I think if uh, Ian, I think is the expert on the transport phase where he, he can answer if he's here, I don't know. Okay. I think they, they, they do some medium interaction in the transport phase, but I'm not, I'm not familiar with this. Okay. Maybe somebody else can comment on this. Thank you. Abhijit, go ahead. Can people hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the I guess the question is, you know, you said cold nuclear matter, not hot nuclear matter. So you mean like in a nucleus? Yes. And and you want partonic transport, just so I be clear. Yes, Not the parton yeah. shower inside a cold nuclear matter. Yes, so you you can do that. Um, it's not in it's not included in Jetscape, uh, at, at least not right not right now. 
Um, I think Ishmael is kind of developing it right now. He's being a little coy <laughs> in maybe not telling. Okay, but uh, it's it's still under development. Okay. Uh, to do a part of the inside cold nuclear matter, it can be done. And that's actually part of the next, which is what we call the Xscape project. Um, yeah, but it's it's uh, in the in the publicly available Jetscape, it's not there. Okay. But but same same, same ideas basically as, as as you just heard here. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, um, Andre. Please go ahead. Hi, can you, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, first, thanks for the talk, Ismail. Um, this is kind of a vague question, but um, do you have any prospects for including an expanding medium in, in these calculations? Or because you mentioned this is necessarily static, probably to, to simplify things. Uh, do you have any idea how you would do that? You mean for the kinetic theory? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the idea to do that is to try it. Because if you want to include the full space space, I mean, if you want the space space distribution to also include the space time dimension, then it will be very demanding. So the idea is to try to include it in some kind of approximation where you you kind of uh, what do you call it? decompose the the space time dynamics in some kind of a, uh, you can decompose them kind of Fourier series where you consider like the first order is what I just showed now. Uh, this will be the zeroth order and then the first order will be some kind of expansion. And then it's, it's the same way you think about V2 and so on. So you kind of try to decompose your uh, this space dynamics in into kind of V2, V3 and so on. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. so okay. I, I mean, I, I don't know the details, but that's interesting. Thanks. Yeah. So it's just kind of a Fourier decomposition. So you, you have you will have different terms of the Fourier decomposition, and each term will describe kind of expand different kind of uh, geometries of your medium. That that's the most straightforward way of doing it. Otherwise, it's too demanding to actually describe the full uh, space dynamics using a distribution because you will need a lot of memory for this. Okay, thanks. That's really interesting. Okay. okay. I think we still have time for one or two questions. Um, if you want to stick uh, to the schedule, so please don't be shy. You can also ask on the Slack. Yeah. Whenever you go. The Slack questions have the uh, advantage that they'll be preserved for posterity, although this is, of course, also recorded. So, either way, um, this should be useful not just for now, but also for later. Any questions? while everybody else is still thinking maybe. Okay, this was not the point of the talk, but uh, of course, as an experimentalist, I have to ask, uh, so for, uh, where, where do you see the, the best prospects for uh, observables for uh, all these, um, for the various features that you described, which uh, I mean, are beautifully visible if you can uh, look at the particle evolution in, uh, in sort of XY space, but uh, unfortunately, that's not uh, that's not where the ex uh, experiment uh, experiments measure. And of course, you have uh, the the one plot uh, that shows the features in in eta phi, which is closer to experiment. But in general, um, um, so if, I mean, there are measurements that are sent that uh, can be explained with uh, these ideas, but they are not super specific in in terms of the the characteristics of the feature. I mean, you have a pretty smooth distribution and it gets sort of modified a bit in the tails, but uh, it's plausible, yeah. but uh, it's not sort of a killer 
killer plot that convinces me that there's nothing else that could be going on here. Yeah, I, I think the, the largest prospect in, in for experiment is these studies that that try to do this background subtraction. Still trying to understand these studies, but I think there were some recent studies, experimental studies that try to subtract the background. Uh, so the thermal background to and try to recover the full energy of the jet. Hmm. This, yeah. Okay. Yeah. As I said, life is hard when the, when the result uh, after a lot of work that goes into that background subtra subtraction is an essentially uh, sort of featureless. Uh, uh, distribution as opposed to the to the to the cones that you see in the, in the, uh, within the models. Okay, are there any other questions? Yeah. Last chance. Um, let me see. Anybody has their hand up? Uh, who, who is it? Abhijit, you uh, you have your hand up. Yeah, just a comment to your question. Sure. Uh, actually, in, in, in our latest Jetscape simulations, and this is also not, not, not yet public, but we're also seeing uh, featureless distribute, you know, shape at, at large angle. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, the cone, <laughs> you know, if it's a very nice medium, and then I guess it's a cone, but if it's a viscous medium with a lot of fluctuation in it, it kind of washes out the cone. Okay, welcome to the club. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's sad. Okay. Um, so, well, I mean, I will of course continue in after the break. So there's a more chance to ask uh, questions if uh, any come to mind. Um, so I think we should now thank uh, Ishmael again. Um, very nice presentation. And we'll come back, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, um, in uh, 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll see you then.